All right, everybody, Pastor Steve Sterling here from the Dallas Revival Center here in the heartbeat of heaven, Dallas, Texas. And uh, I want to invite you to service this weekend, 375 by 30 East, get off of the Bobtown Road exit there in Garland, Texas, here at the Garland Harbor Point, La Quinta Inn by Wyndham. Uh, we're at services at 3.30 on Sunday and then 7.30 on Monday night, Miracle Night. And uh, the power of God's there in the the anointing of God say the miracle move of God is on. So we thank God for what he's been doing and what he's up to. So <clears throat> I want to invite all of you to come on out and be with us. Powerful services. Well, yesterday I was meditating and praying, and I was on the topic of miracle provision. I was listening to an audio by Dr. Leroy Thompson about miracle provision, and it was exciting. Uh, but as I was sitting there, the Lord spoke to me and said, pray uh, for provisional jammed uh, things that have come in to circumvent uh, the kingdom system. And then I got this idea of light. Light hit me. And I, I began to look up scriptures on light. And um, I began to see quite a bit yesterday. So it was an awesome day. I'm not getting uh, <clears throat> anything recorded until now, just now. Uh, in Psalm 18:27, it says, You save the humble, but bring low those whose eyes are haughty. Save the humble, but bring low those whose eyes are haughty. Uh, haughtiness is a terrible thing. Haughtiness is naughtiness. And people are so arrogant, you know, by what they possess and what they hold on to and what they handle. Uh, and that, that's not a good thing. Not at all. And uh, people need to realize that their confidence must be in God and God alone. And that's it. Because uh, our life does not consist in the things that we possess. But our life consists in God. And uh, uh, people are so um, jaded by the system that they think that their life is just going to go on forever and that the life that they know it without God or in a uh, a very distant relationship with God is just going to be blessed all the way through, but not the case. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Romans 8, 37, but in all things we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us, not through money, not through things, not through arrogance and self-confidence and independence and uh, being a self-made person, a self-made man that, you know, if you're, if you're selfing everything, your end's going to be in self too. But humility is the power key to anything and everything in God, period. Being able to humble yourself, becoming to be able to approach him as a child with a childlike disposition and being able to just give in and let God take over and let God control things. That's the key. First Corinthians fifteen fifty seven. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus spoke and he said this of himself. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even if he dies. See, he's the resurrection and the life. Um. He can bring resurrection, restoration, uh, resuscitation, uh, re rejuvenation, to, or, or ruination. He can bring it all up in resurrection life. And see, this is what this whole corona conundrum is. It's, it's getting people to see that the way of man is limited. The, the way of the world is um, fabricated for just a, a quick fix, a now thing. They're not concerned about eternity. They're not concerned about the future. Uh, they're just concerned about now and 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 right what's immediate, thinking that they're going to live forever. But that's not true. Romans six five says, "For if we have become united with him in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection." So resurrection power, resurrection life, uh, is all there for us. Uh, Colossians three nine and ten: Do not lie to one another, since. Um, you laid aside the old self. You laid aside the old self and its evil practices. You put on the new self, which is being renewed to a true knowledge according to the image of the one who created it, created him, see. 
uh, the new knowledge is being renewed in the image of the one who created it. See, God created all of us uh, with specificity in mind. Hallelujah. You know, and Paul calls us this hour, this dispensation, Romans 7, 24, verse, and verse 5, it says, Wretched man that I am, who will set me free from this body of death? He calls it the body of death. It's called the body of sin. It's called the law of sin. You know, let's just read this whole thing out. Wretched, uh, wretched man that I am, uh, who will set me free from the body of this death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then, uh, on the one hand, I myself with my mind am serving the law of God, but on the other, with my flesh, the law of sin. So the law of God and the law of sin are battling back and forth in us for uh, preeminence, basically. That's what it is. And that's the Apostle Paul talking. Hallelujah. But I've got good news for you. We've got a warrior that's going to fight for us in, in Isaiah 42, 13. The Lord will go forth like a mighty warrior. <clears throat> he will arouse his zeal like a man of war. He will utter uh, a shout, and he will raise a, a war cry. He will prevail against his enemies. You know, and he's going to make all his enemies his footstool. That's right. That's what he says. That's in Hebrews ten thirteen. Hallelujah! You know, judgments on this world. Why? Why? Why would people follow the world activity and world knowledge and world get in the world flow and stay there when John? Well, 31 says, now judgment is upon this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. You know, it doesn't make any sense. Hallelujah. But good news is that Jesus Christ uh, came in Hebrews 2.14 says, therefore, since the children share in the flesh and blood, he himself likewise also partook of the same, that through his death he might render powerless him that had power over death, that is the devil. Him that had power <clears throat> over death, that is the devil. So there you go. Thank you, Jesus. You know, he's already disarmed everything. Everything's disarmed. Why would we work out of a disarmed, dysfunctional system and hold to that and cling to that like it was God? I mean, it doesn't make any sense. There's so many people that are senseless, shaded and jaded and just... Uh, glossed over, asleep, and just basically controlled. Colossians 2.15, And when he had disarmed the rulers and authorities, he made a public display of them, having triumphed over them, and through, over them through him. Having triumphed over them through him. Jesus is right, tri riding triumphantly over the disarmed rulers and authorities of this world. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So that's what he's doing, and that's what he's up to. But anyway, I got the thought. Again, that goes back to uh, Psalm 1827. But you save the humble. But you save the humble. But bring low those whose eyes are haughty. But bring low those whose eyes are haughty. So there it is. Uh, what do you see through your looking glass? I got good news for people, though, that are that are that are being mishandled and dandled and uh, that are just being misinformed and interlock with uh, all kinds of disappointment and destruction, discouragement, uh, despair, despondency, uh, defeat. You know, uh, Psalm 107, verse 13, then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. He saved them from their distresses. He brought them out of darkness. That's the theme. God was speaking to me yesterday about uh, position with him and, uh, Leroy Thompson, Dr. Leroy Thompson was talking about prophetic positioning. And then the Lord brought the thought of light, and then he, he ran a gamut of, of things in my spirit, and, then, and I came alive with it. Uh, any, anyway, it says, they cried out. They cried out. Hallelujah. I got an interruption here real quick. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Well, anyway, in Psalm 107, 13, they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. He saved them from their distresses. He brought them out of darkness. See, that's the whole thing is the bringing out of darkness. 
and the shadow of death. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death, broke their chains. What chains do you have? Do you have uh, uh, debt chains, uh, negative credit chains? Uh, do you have black chains, uh, poverty chains, uh, sickness chain, whatever it is, uh, living in bondage chains? Uh, he broke their chains and let them and let them give thanks to the Lord. He brought them out of darkness and performed wonders to the sons of men. So there it is. He, he, he broke their chains and got them out of darkness, got them out of the shadow of death so that they could give thanks to God. And um, he's working wonders and signs. That's the good news. God has a miracle palette, a miracle, uh, he has miracle potential. He has miracle ability. He has miracle uh, construct. That's who he is. His name is wonderful. His name is, and that wonderful means miracles. His name is wonderful. His name is miracles. So, you know, you could be uh, even a son and daughter of Abraham, which is a covenant uh, relationship. It's a covenant people, you know, but still be bound. You know, Luke 13, 16 says, then should not this daughter of Abraham, should not this daughter of Abraham, whom Satan had bound for 18 long years, be released from her bondage on the Sabbath day? Look at that. Uh, she was a daughter of Abraham, but Satan bound her for 18 years in her flesh. You may be bound in your flesh. I don't know what the situation is, but God does. And God can work miracles to take you out, uh, give you light beams of liberty and light beams of functionality and light beams of glory and light beams of healing wholeness wellness soundness and completeness and just stream light to you and let you dance on the light beams and just get you out of anything that you might be involved in or are locked into or, or in bondage to or in servitude to hallelujah i believe it in the name of jesus see god awakens with with, with angel light and he can, he can loose that angel light on you right now. He can wake you up out of your prison and give you a new prism and perspective and show you a whole new continuity of things. And he can change your world. Hallelujah. My God, I feel it swirling right now. You know, Acts 12, 7, suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in the cell. Suddenly, suddenly, everybody say suddenly, suddenly, immediately, now, quickly faster than the blink of an eye, faster than a camera shutter speed. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in the cell. There it is, light and the angels flow together, don't they? He tapped Peter on the side and woke him up. Look at that, he had to wake him up, shake him up and get him up. And that's what God has to do with some of us. Wake us up, shake us up and get us up. Tap Peter on the side and woke him up saying, get up quickly. I mean, hurry up, get up, boy, get up. And as soon as he obeyed, the chains fell off his wrist. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Just do what God tells you to do when the light hits you. And there'll be such delightsomeness. There'll be such freedom. There'll be such liberty that your chains will fall off your wrists. Hallelujah. Psalm 68 and 6. God settles the lonely in families. He leads, look at this. He leads the prisoners out of, or out to, excuse me. He leads the prisoners out to prosperity. He leads the prisoners out to prosperity. But the rebellious dwell in a sun-scorched land. But the rebellious dwell in a sun-scorched land. Hallelujah. Isn't that something? Oh, my. you got to love that. It's amazing. You know, it, it takes God's power and supernatural action to free us. And, and to free us from who? Well, to free us from that old, tired, lost, given up, compromised, indifferent self. That old, lost, tired, given up, compromised, indifferent self. Got to spring us into action. Shake us up and wake us up. See, the other day I had two parallel uh, visions. One of me was who I am now. And then I had another parallel vision, who God sees me as now. And that really shook me up. It set me in a whole new vein of prayer. It set me in a whole new vein of anointing. It set me a whole new way in a wave of glory. It put me in a whole new uh, paradigm. It just shifted my whole being over. Hallelujah. Uh, 
I like what it says. Dr. Leroy Thompson wrote this. Lots of time debt uh, causes us to have something we're not ready for. Lots of time debt causes us to have something that we're not ready for. Lots of time debt is causes us to have something we are not ready for. Many times people have put themselves ahead of God. They have not been waiting on God. They've not been letting God make the decisions. And so they've stepped ahead and, and under their own initiative with the worldly system and tools in the world have really run up their credit cards and run up their indebtedness and, and, and taken on a second mortgage and just done a lot of things, got in a car and put that on a five, seven year note, etc., etc., just because they couldn't uh, do it the way God wanted them to do it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And you know, the thought is that um, we can be in proper contact with God. We can feel God's presence. We can even be saved, but not be positioned to receive prosperity. Not be positioned to receive the prosperity. That is the confounding thing for a lot of people. They're good people, but they just don't have what God wants them to have in terms of what they need to do, and where they need to be, and how they need to operate in, in the kingdom system. Thank you, Jesus. Acts 16, 26, suddenly a strong earthquake shook the foundation of the prison. I think what we need sometimes is a, uh, a good for God to create a shake-up and a wake-up, uh, give us our earthquake, so to speak. And I think a lot of people uh, are finding out in this corona conundrum that that's exactly what's happening. Suddenly a strong earthquake shook the foundations of the prison. Some of our prisons need to be shaken. And at once all the doors flew open. Look at that. At once all the doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. Look at that. All the doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. And this is what I'm praying for for anybody that's listening right now, that's listless and lifeless and different, that is just flowing in what they see as their own normal life, as, as, as a habitual life and how things have been flowing and going. And they've acquiesced and just settled down and are not experiencing God's high life. Hallelujah. Um, I like what it says in Psalm Sixty-nine, thirty-three. but the Lord listens to the needy. He does not despise his captive people. The Lord listens to the needy and does not despise his captive people. You need to get a hold of that scripture, Psalm 69, 33. Thank you, Jesus. And so many people are, are listless and lifeless, and they're walking aimlessly and wandering. You know, God talks about that wandering spirit in Psalm 107. For some wandered in the desert wastelands, finding no path to the city to dwell in. Some wandered in desert wastelands, finding no path to a city to dwell in. See, the wandering spirits, wandering in the arid places, wandering in the unfruitful places, wandering in the desert wastelands. Yes, and some even, Psalm 107.10, some sat in darkness in the shadow of death, shadows of death, prisoners in misery and chains. So many people are prisoners. Uh, they're not happy. Uh, they're not uh, energized. They're not full of life. They're not full of God's victory and his presence and his power. And, and so they're just uh, subjugated and relegated to shadows in life. Uh, but God has the power, Psalm 107, 14. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and broke their chains. It broke away their chains. He brought them out of darkness, the shadow of death, and broke their chains. Hallelujah. Psalm 107, 10 to 14. Such as sit in darkness and the shadow of death, being bound in affliction and iron. See, so many are in servitude. So many are bound. And it's iron-like. They can't get out. They can't free themselves. But God said, I'm going to set you free. Yeah, Jeremiah 2.20, uh, 2 for long ago you broke your yoke and tore off your chains. Hallelujah. But unfortunately, you know, a lot of people got away from God. and that He set them free. But if we put this uh, Jeremiah 2.20 in order, for long ago you broke your chains and tore off your chains, saying, I will not serve, indeed, on every high hill and under every green tree you lay down as a prostitute. So many people have prostituted themselves. Uh, they left God's liberty. They left God's freedom. They left God's uh, deliverance and decided to compromise into idyllic lives, living lives, serving idols instead of the living God. 
Again, Psalm 72, 12, for he shall deliver the needy who cry out. That's the key. He shall deliver the needy who cry out and the afflicted and the afflicted who have no helper. So God's going to deliver. And uh, those that are really crying out, that really mean business, that are really honest, that really want to see change. Amen. And he's going to be their helper because the afflicted have no helper. But when we cry out in our need, God sends his deliverance. Isn't that wonderful? Thank you, Jesus. I like it. This promise in Jeremiah 30, verse 8. On that day, declares the Lord of hosts, I will break the yoke off their necks and tear off their bonds, and no longer will strangers enslave them. On that day, declares the Lord of hosts, I will break the yoke off their necks, tear off their bonds, and no longer will strangers enslave them. Hallelujah. Nahum 1, 13. For, you, for, for from you I will now break off this yoke and tear away your shackles. I will not break off his yoke and tear away your shackles. There it is. Praise God. God has the ability to break and to tear and to rend and to rest and, er, and, er, and pull us out of our containment and confinement. Take us out of our the natural way of life. Take us out of our sedimentary way of life. Take us out of our unchanging way of life. Take us out of our unfruitful way of life. And Bring his brilliance and resilience to bear and to loose us so that we can operate and function out of dynamic kingdom enforcement and influx and, and impartation right now in the middle of where we are and who we are and what we are. He can bring you animation and facilitation. He can give you traction. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, you know, Psalm 140, verse 12, I know the Lord upholds justice for the poor, defends the cause of the needy, upholds and defends the cause of the needy. Thank you, Jesus. And I tell you, and I, I speak to you, and I, I, I command you to show yourself. I command you to come out. I command you to be delivered in the name of Jesus, Isaiah 49, 9, and say to the prisoners, come out. And to those in darkness, show yourselves. Come out, show yourselves. And they will feed along the pathways and find pasture on every barren hill. They will feed uh, along the pathways and find pasture on every barren hill. Look at that. God promises that we'll never have a barrenness again. We'll, uh, I'll never be broke another, again another day in my life. Money cometh to us now. Money has our name on it. Money is chasing us. Matthew 6, 33, seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these other things will be added unto you. We're seekers of the kingdom, the kingdom of God, whom God derives pleasure from to, uh, to give us. They will feed along the pathways and find pasture on the barren hill. See, show yourselves. Come out of darkness. Come out of prison. See, God's got a work. God's got a life. God's got a highlight for you. God's got a place that he has prepared, a place that he has provision for a place uh, that he has these platitudes and high latitudes he has the heaven's glory and that he wants you to be right in the middle of glory to god hallelujah i like uh, psalm 40 verse 5 many O lord my god are the wonders you have done and the plans you have for us see i'm not just talking off the top of my head this is reality this is the word reality i don't just say stuff God backs everything up by his word. Psalm 40, verse 5, and it's eternal. His word is spirit and life. It's eternal. It moves on forever. Hallelujah. God moved, his word moves 360 degrees in eternity in every direction and on every level, in every strata. Hallelujah. Psalm 40, verse 5, many, O Lord, O my God, are the wonders you have done and the plans you have for us. None can compare. Look at that. None can compare. None can hold a candle to you. Hallelujah. And then, you know, there's a, there's a hurry up. The, the man of God prays that hurry up, Lord. Psalm 70, verse 5. I'm poor and needy. Hurry, hurry to me, O God. You are my help and my deliverer. O Lord, do not delay. Do not delay this very day. Make life pay. Break me through the fray. Hallelujah, no matter what the devil may say. Glory to God, you're lifted up high and your throne, your train fills the temple, Lord. You're not gonna you're not gonna fool around with this fooleroggery, this fooleroggery stuff. We're not bound by limits. 
We're not bound by restriction. We're not bound by restraints. God is unlimited. Glory to God. God can do anything anywhere, anytime with anyone. Hallelujah. That's who he is. That's what he can do. That's how he can bring it. Praise God. Psalm 70, verse 5. That's your scripture, man. And hurry up. Put a hurry up on it. Put a hurry up on it. And no, no, no delay on the thing. Praise God. Hallelujah. And I'm just going to read these scriptures off. Just you can go find them. Psalm 22, 19, Psalm 40, verse 17, Psalm 69, 29, Psalm 70, verse 4, Psalm 71, 12, Psalm 86, 1, Psalm 141, 1. These all talk about God hurrying up. Psalm 40, verse 17, Psalm 69, verse 29, Psalm 109, verse 22. All talk about God putting a rush on it, putting a rush on it, putting a hush on the devil, and putting a rush on our blessing. Glory to God. There's no uncertainty in the anointing. That's what Dr. Leroy Thompson said. Says. There's no uncertainty in the anointing, and I agree with him 100%. Thank you, Jesus. And, and, and there's a no longer thing we gotta we gotta consider. We gotta grab a hold of this. We gotta take it by faith. We've got to let this become flush in our lives. Psalm four, uh, Isaiah 49:10. They will no longer hunger nor thirst, nor will the scorching heat of sun strike them. For he who has compassion on them will guide them and lead them besides the springs of water. I mean, he could do it. He's bringing it. He is moving in a mighty way. Breaking through the fray just like David. When God used uh, David and put the anointing on him so he could break through his enemies in Samuel, 2 Samuel 5.20. And David came to Belparazim and David defeated them there. And he said, the Lord has broken through mine enemies. Before me like a breaking flood. Therefore, the name of that place is called Baal Parism. The Lord has broken through my enemies before me like a breaking flood. Hallelujah. And I believe that's what's happening in your life right now. And, you know, the thought is, and a thought came to me yesterday as I was meditating. I thought, my God, what a beautiful scripture. Isaiah 54, 5. We're rolling the dice. I mean, we're rolling the dice. Let's like in a Vegas casino. My God, you can roll this one, and it'll work for you every time. Isaiah 54, 5. For your husband is your maker. For your husband is your maker. The Lord of hosts is his name. Look at that. You're married to the maker. Your maker. You're actually married to your maker. Your husband is your maker. The Lord of hosts is his name. The Lord of angel armies is his name. The Holy One of Israel, who's holy all the time, he's always sublime, he's one of a kind, and he's always on a shine. Ha! Hallelujah! The Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer. He's got deep pockets. He can buy you out of any loss, liability, and indemnity. He's got deep pockets. He can buy you out of anything through the blood of his Son. He is called the God of all the earth. He's called the God of all the earth. So you're married to your maker. You're married to the Lord of angel armies. You're married to the Holy One of Israel, your Redeemer. You think he's going to let you fall down? You think he's going to let you just dissipate into just a mediocrity, a mediocre, just over broke, just a little bit, just barely enough? That's ridiculous. Amen. Psalm 40, 70, verse 4 says, May all those who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation ever say, The Lord God be magnified. May all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation ever say, The Lord God be magnified. Hallelujah. Isn't that lovely? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, I like it. This is always a ray of hope for people that don't have any hope at all. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, it's a great scripture. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, in Psalm 9, verse 18, For the needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. So the needy shall not be forgotten. The expectation of the poor uh, shall not perish forever. See, um, see w what's happening is, is the world banking system is trying to cut you off. And this is a statement made by Dr. Leroy Thompson. The world banking system is trying to cut you off so that you would depend on them and not on your true source, the Lord God Almighty. Put a lot of...
inviting a little incentives out there to grab you when your faith isn't working, when you're living in compromise, when you don't have the anointing, when you, you're just kind of moving along, trying to guess your way through things. See, That's not what God wants. God wants you to be sure. Hallelujah. I like this in uh, Isaiah 30, verse 20. says, And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity, the water of affliction, you shall not. Uh, let me read that again. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity, the waters of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed in a corner anymore. I love it. See what God's doing, bringing people out. He's bringing teachers out. He's bringing anointed vessels out to, to get you out, to show you, to give you the way out, to give you the understanding, the unction, the function, to give you a, a another reality so you could step out of where you are and step into where God is and what he has for you. I mean, for real, for real. Isaiah 30, verse 20, And though the Lord give you bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed in a corner any more, but thine eyes shall see thy teach thine eyes shall see thy teachers. Isaiah fifty four thirteen, and all the children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy teachers. You know, Proverbs twenty three eighteen, you will be rewarded, your hope will not be disappointed. Isaiah twenty three eighteen, you will be rewarded and your hope will not be disappointed. Hallelujah, because we know the word of God is everything. When you get the word on it, it's all over, but the shouting, because the word's already been tested and tried. It's already been through the fire. It's already been through the flood. It's already succeeded in every way. So when you hang on to that, it'll take you on the ride of your life. Psalm 1911, by them indeed your servant is warned. And talk about the word, in keeping them is what great reward. Psalm 5811, men will say, there is surely a reward for the righteous. There it is. Yeah, and so for those of you who think that, less, that there's just less and less of things, less and less of God, less and less of the glory, less and less of God's ability, shame on you. But anyway, Isaiah fifty four twelve, I will make your pinnacles of rubies, your gates of sparkling jewels, and all your walls of precious stones. In the New Living Translation, I will make your towers of sparkling rubies. Your gates are shining gems and your walls are precious stone. Does that sound like God's meager? Does that sound like God has just a little portion? Does that sound like God is not going to come up and bump us up to the highest possible scenarios and levels? My God, forget about it. Get that out of your mind. You know, let's teach you the right way. Isaiah fifty four thirteen. Then all your sons will be taught by the Lord and great will be their prosperity. Then all your sons, Isaiah fifty four thirteen. Then all your sons will be taught by the Lord and great will be their prosperity. Yeah. And there's two things. I mean, you got to consider the bridegroom, you know, which is the Lord Jesus Christ talked about in the Song of Solomon. Song of Solomon 5.14, his arms are rods of gold set with crystallite. Look at that. His body is an ivory panel bedecked with sapphires. Does that look like that he's coming in a broke manner? My God, how to get that out of your mind, you know. And then speaking of wisdom in Job 28.16, it cannot be valued in the gold of Orph, in the precious onyx or sapphire. Wisdom cannot be valued in the gold of Orph, or in the precious onyx or sapphire. Wisdom is worth much, much more than natural riches. I mean, it is something else. Get in, get in your mind, Deuteronomy 30, verse 3, Then the Lord your God will restore your fortunes and will have compassion on you and gather you again from all nations where you have been scattered. Well, that's it for now. Uh, thank God. That was from uh, Tuesday, August 11, 2020. I'm just recording it today on the 12th. I know it's a long one, but... It's what needed to be spoken, what had needed to be said. God bless you. Bye-bye for now. Steve Sterling, for want to sow now, get, in, in, get out of where you're at. Get out of the old, get out of the antiquated and outdated. Get out of the stymied and stayed and stopped phases of your life. Get in and sow into somebody that's got a movement, that's got it going on. Things that are happening, things that are rolling. Someone that's on the move, someone that's got the momentum and the mojo. You need to do that.
You need to get some of your material into that realm so that God can shake it up and wake it up and get it up and move it up to the highest possible position. And, you know, and that's what God's speaking to me now about that for you. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, that's what he's saying because, you know, I'm just calling the spirit of upgrade on you right now. Isaiah 60, verse 17 and 18. For brass, I will give you gold. For iron, I will bring you silver. For wood, brass, and for the stones of iron, I will make thy officers peace and thy exactors righteousness. Violence will no, be, no longer be heard in your land, wasting nor destruction within thy borders. But thou shalt call thy wall salvation and the gates praise. So God said, sow it up, sow it up, and, and, and sow into this ministry. And then watch God pull you out. You know, he's got the tow truck to do it. He'll pull you right out of wherever you're stuck. Hallelujah. Put you right on the middle of the high beam heaven highway in Jesus' name. So go ahead and uh, just sow it. Uh, download Zelle, Z-E-L-L-E, -E, on your smartphone. And um, when you do that. Enter four six nine three three five three three five six four six nine three three five three three five six, or go to my Dallas Revival Center page, Dallas Revival Center, and click on my PayPal Me button or my PayPal Me link, and it'll send you uh, the opportunity to sow. And also, you can also go to um, Facebook and the inbox there. They have a dollar sign. You can click on that, and you can send money that way as well, or you can send it to the PO box. Uh, care of Dallas Revival Center, 271-636, 271-636, Dallas, Texas, 75227, 75227. Um, and uh, you can go ahead and uh, make your checks and money orders out to UAWOMI, 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 which is United Assemblies Worldwide Outreach, Outreach Ministries Incorporated, UAWOMI. And it'll get right into the mailbox, and we'll make sure that you get everything that God wants you to have. And God will really, and it's all a get quick, it's get, it's get rich, it's get under that haven of help. I mean, now, quickly, immediately, suddenly, uh, faster than shutter speed, faster than the blink of an eye. You got the scriptures on, I gave them to you. God bless. Bye bye for now. Some of you have never given and never sown, so you have no idea what you're missing. But amen. Talk to you later.